as witness so long ago this morning, that old count was settled long ago. It was settled at Calvary, thank God for that. And there, all the blood was shed that needed to be shed. And every sin was washed away that needed to be washed away as we believe and trust in Him that the blood was supplied and it's supplied in full. But I got to think, Paul, you know, the devil always wants to open a new account. You know that? He's like you go somewhere to the mall or whatever, do you have a credit card and you want one? You go into some of the other stores and try to give you a credit card so they can get you snared and hooked and, and come back and all that kind of stuff and get more money off the interest and so forth. But best thing is to stay away from those things, you know that? And uh, I had a family member one time, she and her was really into credit cards and uh, was in another state that you've never met her. A good, good Christian woman, but she and her got into credit card business, so to speak. And, she uh, was going out and just charging and charging and charging and charging and charging. And finally, her husband had enough of it. He got up one morning, and when she came down for breakfast, it was a pile of credit card chips, so that he had already cut them all up. And uh, that, I'm sure, made some conversation at the breakfast table that morning, you know. And so a lot of ladies would not like that. But that was one way to end it, because her and her daughter was just going out and just spending money right and left and all, all kind of stuff. And... Uh, you know, nothing wrong with wanting things as long as the things don't have us, you know that. And so, uh, the devil wants to open a new account with us. I want you to turn to Matthew chapter 4 this morning, please. Matthew chapter 4. Somehow it seems like we're, we're into this. I, as I've listened to this singing this morning, different songs we sang, and maybe different things that's been said, but uh, the devil wants to tempt us and get us out of the way of Christ, amen? And we want to stay in the way and stay on the path that God has set out before us. There's no sense in losing out now when we're this close, you know that? We're almost home, church. I believe that we're almost home. We're almost ready to go up, and I'm looking forward to going up. I'm looking, I'm watching the skies. If I see a fun looking crowd, I love that. Look again, it might be him, you know that? But keep that your eyes on the prize, amen, because it, we're, our salvation is nearer than when we first believed, and I thank God for that. Let's pray together, and then let's get into the Word. Our Father in God, we're so thankful. For the presence of the Holy Spirit today. What a beautiful day it's been in your house already. For the song that you gave Cliff, God, and Paul has said to music, Father. And it's been such a blessing to us, Lord. And, and the other songs that Dave has, has taught us and we've worshipped with today, God. And, and all that, that Paul and Dave, all that, that Angela, each one has done, God. It's been such a great, a great expression of praise. And God, you've had a, a variety to choose from. Just like can you, this, this beautiful bouquet of flowers that our brother and sister brought in today. And God, we pray that you receive our praises and our prayers and, and God, our spiritual songs as you would allow us to minister in the spirit and even in song today, God, we pray. And Lord, that you would just bless us this day and this hour within your word. And, and Father, let us not leave here disappointed or unfed, but fed fully and richly, not because of the, of the, of the pastor, not because of the, the ability of the speaker, but because of the, of the anointing of the Holy Spirit. As they will take even the words that I speak and turn them into, into the words of life and the breads of, bread of life. God, we pray that you feed each one of us once again deeply and richly. And God, if there's any snare, God, and just set us free this day, we pray. And God, we give you the thanks, the praise, the honor, and the glory. For we ask it in Jesus' name and agreement. We say amen and amen. Here in Matthew chapter 4, we find the temptation of our Savior. How many's ever been tempted before? Okay, the rest of your line, okay, and so you might as well get in here and own up to it, because if you're not tempted or being tempted, you're dead, all right? And uh, so you can't tempt a dead man, you know that? You can leave a, a beer right there. I go to a funeral home sometimes, they got a beer in there with that guy. They're going to help him a bit, he's going to drink that thing, you know that? Sometimes they stick money down there, really that money going to help that guy. It didn't help me, give me the money, you know that? Or give his wife the money or something. That's just, that's just brain dead, you know that? I remember one time this woman was putting a bag of coins down in with daddy because she thought he might need one. Well, for what, you know? If he went to heaven, they walk and go. If he went to hell, he could not drink the water. Because isn't he down there? You know that? So why stick money in the casket with somebody? It doesn't make a lot of sense to it. It doesn't. You know that? And all the silly things they put in there. I went to one one time. They had enough stuff in there. I could have started my own Walmart or dollar store. You know that? And had little bottles of beer and all kind of stuff. Whiskey down in there and... I don't know what all they had, but I told the funeral director, where's that stuff at? He said, well, they got it out of there. I said, well, that was good as either going out or under the blank because I'm not having a funeral at a church with a bunch of liquor in there. You know that? And so I was going to do some rearrangement in the family business, so to speak. And if that's, if that's what it took, but that's all right. God's a good God anyway. Amen. 
And no matter how crazy I am, that there just comes a point in a place you can only stand so much. I know we're living in some times that are very challenging. Times that are, and, and it seems like this COVID thing, it just keeps beating us and beating us and beating us. And, and we keep fighting this thing, but keep, keep on going. Amen. We're getting through this thing. And we're going to come out on the other side in the praises and the glory of God. Amen. We're, we're living in, in such dark times today. And I, I was thinking last night, I, I was had a wedding. I was thinking about last night, I had a wedding last night. Supposed to be at 8 o'clock, and the bride made it at 9, which is about the late. I said, we had a bride show up. And the guy said, uh, one of the guys said, well, how long do we wait? I said, we wait for about 20 minutes before Subway closes, you know that? And then we'll get out of here. And she, <laughs> and she says that, she just going to miss it, you know? But that didn't say like that. I did. I said, 20 minutes before Subway closes. That's the that's cutoff time for her to get her. But we waited past that, and she made it as closing time at Subway anyway. But we, they got married. But as we were going down, I, 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 was, up, I was going through the McDonald's line to get something for my wife and I to drink later. And uh, I, I looked, and it was a very dark look of storm back there, uh, back uh, Back towards uh, back towards Knoxville on our way, Ralph, back towards your way, and and, and it just it looked like I'm like Judgment Day back there, and the sky was you know you can see we got there it was just thunder, it was lightning, it was lightning up, it didn't look good. I put one of the girls uh, up at McDonald's and prayed about that, you know that. And I just finally said, I rebuked the storm, you know, that, and thank God for this meter, just the mercy of God. It was always the mercy of God, it's never me. But God, that storm just, yeah, it started this way, this way, never had, just not a drop of rain, amen? And I thank God for that, you know, but you look at those black clouds out there, and you're trying to have a wedding. I know we're headed for a wedding, but there's a lot of dark clouds, you know, that? Yeah. This world, this darkness has become more prevalent and more prevalent all the time. The books that Freddie wrote years ago, this press of darkness and curse of the darkness, it seems like it's coming to pass right before our face and before our eyes today. At one time, you could get a smell or a hit of a demon maybe about behind something, when you smell his perfume or whatever, and look at this operation, so to speak. But now the devil's out there on Main Street. He's out there on the television. He's out there doing his own thing. You've got our country, man. They're trying to turn us towards socialism. They're trying to get us out of the path of, you know, of capitalism and get us in the mess that we're in. I was listening to an old message by Dr. John R. Rice the other night. I think it was pre I know it was preached back in the 60s, maybe about 64. And he said, and this was amazing, Pastor Dave. He's, I heard him say that. He said, he was talking about Lyndon Johnson. He said, I think he's a good man. But he said his platform, the platform of the Democrat Party, is socialist. That was back in 1964, right along that line. And how much more prevalent it is today. That it's just outright, outright socialism and communism that they're trying to bring us into. And church, I look at thing. I, I, you know, people say religion and politics don't mix. If somebody doesn't take a stand, everybody's going to fall. So I've decided to take a stand. If we get shot, I'm, I'm 66. I'm not cheating. As I said, cheat me out of much anybody except some Medicare and Social Security and some arthritis. They get, so I'm ready to go on. Hallelujah. You know that? So it really doesn't matter when I go like one like this and, or whatever. Now, we're worried about the hornet's last like the hornet's nest up there and that that, that pavilion not pavilion but uh, that point that bring thing dig around things they have man or whatever and I can't think of it right because he doesn't send up I'm not worried about the hornets and anything else you know that because hornets do not have a sense of humor and one guy was trying to tell me he was an, I don't know he must have been a Greenpeace person or something yeah let him and let live that kind of stuff you know he's never been sung by a hornet this silly thing or something you know that once they sting you you don't really have a lot of love and affection for them you know that I was, I was going to hay one time and I hit a, hit a, hit the thing there's a horse nest hanging in a tree and one hornet came out of there and he must have been, he must have been in the summit to go get Jim or what. He come down out of that nest and he come out of there and he and Jim, he just got bam right there for you. You know, what an evil, wicked, demonic devil that he was, you know that? But you know, all these things, I don't know why I'm saying all this today, but I'm saying that we're living in some dark, serious times in this day and age that we're living in. And this world is falling apart right before our very eyes. Our country is falling apart right before our very eyes. It seems like that, that, that every time you turn the television on, it's went from bad to worse or from worse to whatever's beyond worse. You know, that worse is not a word, but even more worse, I guess, or whatever. It just kept going and going and going, and that's the way it is today. But friends, I'm going to tell you, it doesn't matter how dark it gets out there. The Word of God says that, that, that darkness shall cover the earth. And gross darkness to people, but the glory of God will rise upon his church, amen. And these last days, let's expect to move in the Spirit of God. Let's expect that God is going to pour out the Holy Ghost upon his church again, just like he did at Pentecost, just like he did Pastor at Azusa Street. And we're going to see a fresh move of the Spirit of Almighty God. And we're going to, when we go out of this world, we're not going whimpering, we're going shouting, amen. We're going with the devil's jelly underneath our toes, amen. And we're going to praises of God upon our lips and the high sword. 
sword and the sword of God within our hand and the praises of God, church. Amen. Amen. Are you getting this today? All the my friends, I tell you, the devil wants to get you and me off that path. He wants to get us confused at, and get us into all the darkness that's around about us. At. It seems today, like, as the Word of God says, we're back in Isaiah, that they call bitter, sweet, and sweet, bitter, and, and all the different things that's going on today. Good is evil, and evil is good. You stand up and take a stand for God, and you're mocked, and you're ridiculed. Well, friends, if you're going to laugh back here for something anyway, then nothing else, just because your nose is running. So you might as well take a stand for Christ and serve God, and don't look back, but just look Look up, you repent as you sit in the garden here and don't give up in this last hour of the fight. Hallelujah. Thank God that God is on our side. But friends, I see that even in this state that there's so many that is in darkness, so many that are bound and snared. As the Word of God says back in Ecclesiastes, that they're snared like fishes in a net or whatever. It's an evil time and they're not their time. But friends, do that. We need not to be unwise at the times that we're living at, but wise and knowing that what's going on around and about us has been prophesied. There's nothing that's happened today in this day that has surprised the Holy Ghost one single bit. How do you know that today? That God knows exactly what it is. In that case, I miss it later. Let me say it right now. The devil cannot, and the devil tries to prophesy. This is always a false prophecy and never healed to it. You check it out. It's got to be by the word of Almighty God. And the devil try to prophesy to you. He'll try to get you in a clear voice or get you into some kind of a horoscope or whatever. If you're already in horoscopes, I don't mind preaching this. That's of the devil, that's satanic, that is hellish, that is ungodly, that is demonic, and you need to repent of it today and get to the altar and say, God, forgive me and set me free because you have wrapped a chain of darkness around your heart, your mind, your spirit, and your soul, even maybe your body, and you've got to get rid of that thing or it's going to drag you down to hell. Amen. Are you hearing what we're telling you today? So many snared in that stuff. So many uh, snared in the darkness and the wickedness and the occult and the day and the age that we're living in right now. What a horrible, horrible thing to see people in that kind of bondage. And you find that the devil trying to prophesy to you and tell you that you're going to die. How many's heard that lately? You're going to die. You're going to go nuts. Or you're going to go broke. Or you're going to get sick. Or you're going to get cancer. Don't accept the devil's prophecy. Accept what God has said within His Word and stand and live by the Word of Almighty God. So Jesus told the devil, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Hallelujah. Amen. One time Derek Prince was in a service, he said, I met this over in England or somewhere, and he had been ministering, and at the end of the service, he was tired, and but he said, thank God, my, 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 my guard was still up. This lady began to say to him, I see you in a car up against a tree, and he realized that the devil tried to prophesy his death, and if he would have accepted that, he would end up probably dead and against a tree, but he rebuked that and knew that it was not of God, and he stood his ground, and that never came to pass, and friend, if you're going to make it through, you've got to believe what God has said, and throw away all the, the works of darkness, and throw away all the, the books of of a cold and magic and all this stuff that's going and don't think it's not here in Grafton it's here in Grafton as big as an ox and you better believe it you better believe it it's right here say well I'm not into it now but you don't know what your next door neighbor's into you know that? You don't know what kind of demonic stuff that they're, they're harboring their homes and in their hearts and all the different darkness that men's hearts are pumping darkness in the last days and friends, you look at all the things that's going on that people are healing themselves to. The, the, the child molestation. The, 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 I heard someone say the other day, that was the president was talking on a speech there about the trafficking of women today, the, the sex trafficking, the, 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 the slavery that's going around the world. Yet they're, they're looking back to slavery a hundred and, and, or to over 100 years ago, over 150 years ago. They're looking back at the slavery in this country. That's not the slavery we need to be concerned about today. It's the slavery of women and children that they exploited and shipped around the world, even out of the United States of America, either coming in or going out of this country. That's the slavery we need to be worried about. Right. Amen. You need to hold on to that and believe that today. That's where it's at. Amen. And listen, we're not trying to say slavery in the past was right. In fact, I felt God tell me to pray. I was praying for our black brothers and sisters all around the world. Interesting, you should testify about that girl, Angela, because I prayed for them. I had a dream last night about black brothers being carried or soldiers or whatever. And friends today, we need to, we need to honor you one another, not because of race, but because we're all made in the image of Almighty God. Amen. And I don't believe in race anyway, to tell you the truth. There's only one race, and it's the human race. But there's another race that's called the rat race. You can run it if you want you win, you're still around. That's all you did. See, the thing is, he wants you to think there's a black race, a yellow race, a red race, a white race. There's only one race of men. God has made of one blood all men that dwell on the face of the earth. That's right. God made us. He didn't make somebody out of one monkey. He didn't make anybody out of any monkeys or whatever. 
When I was back in school, they tried to tell you that it was there. You got this Caucasian race, you got the Mongolian race, and you got the Negroid race. We're all one people in there. Why are you giving this to us? Even though the racists are kind of silly, you know that? They're, they're just plain dumb. And they're, they're locked in the chains of darkness and bondage. This is not my notes today, but this is where it's at. And they're trying to shove race down our throat. I, I never, I'm telling you, I, I never said, I don't know what I am. I guess I'm a Heinz 57. But my brother got that thing, or his wife got it for him, that, that said our ancestry that we're strong for, uh, for the British Isles, and we're strong for Britain, and we're strong for Irish, and we're strong for, for French, and we're strong for German, or whatever, and a little bit of Scandinavian. I don't know about, I feel sometimes they don't have David Crockett and half poor South Alligator, or whatever, or something like that. Friends, I'm going to tell you, friends, today, it doesn't matter where you come from, it doesn't matter where you're going to. Hallelujah. It doesn't matter where you come up, what, where you crawl out of, what, huh? it matters what mansion you're headed to. Are you hearing me today? Amen. That's all that's important. It's all this garbage you're trying to get you involved in today. Trying to make you feel guilty. I don't feel guilty over slavery. Amen? I didn't have a slave. So I'm not going to feel guilty about it. You want to feel guilty because you're white on this guy? That, that's your God. Go ahead and feel it. Amen. It's not mine. I'm not going to take an ounce of, an ounce of guilt or an ounce of shame about it. Amen. Are you getting this today? Amen. I'm looking back. We need to look forward. We need to look around us today. We need to make things right. But you see, there's so many that are shivering this time, even in the church today. I know that there's so many that appeal to the temptation in the church today. You talk to people that are living in immorality, they're living in sex sin, and they talk about the anointing, they talk like they're going to heaven. Friends, I'm afraid today that they're going to trump the sounds, they're not going to be higher up than what they can jump. Are you hearing this today? Say, you're being judgmental. No, it's the word of God, friend. The word of God judges us all. Man shall not live. We didn't read it, but the Bible says here that Jesus was led up with the spirit in the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. I don't know if Jesus can be tempted, you can be tempted. The devil didn't have anything in Jesus. You know that? Even at the end of Jesus' ministry, there in the garden, he said, or in the upper I think it was, he said, they said that the last supper, he said, the devil come at the prince of this world, and he has nothing in me, Jesus said. He had nothing he could pry. Are you getting this today? Because Jesus never had an Adamic nature. Yeah. I mean, you know, you say, well, I was born to the Adamic nature. I heard brother say this the other day, and I liked it. I, I think it's because it's the truth. He said, you weren't born with an Adamic nature. You were born with a satanic nature because Adam got his bad nature from the devil. Does that make sense to you today? Well, that just kind of disposes your family pictures down a little bit. <laughs> think we'll turn it back down to somebody porn. Look at your Uncle Jake's shoulder, Amen. Get the biggest piece of pie that he can get off the table. That's the devil. See, that's the way that it is, church. The devil wants to tempt everybody and destroy us and deceive us if he can. What did Jesus say? Be not deceived. Take heed that you be not deceived. The first sign of the last days is to take heed that you're not deceived, that you're not drawn aside by the works of the devil. Drawn aside to something else other than, than, than the spirit of Almighty God. There's so many today, as I said, that there's simply today in the church they are all bound up in sin. The friend of the Bible says there's coming an hour of temptation which will be upon all the earth. I'm going to believe that's a great tribulation. And friends, he says, because you've kept the word of my patience, I will keep you from that hour of temptation. Amen. I want you to see, church, it all comes back to the word of Almighty God. It all comes back to the word. Are you getting this today? Everything that we do is based upon the word of God. If it's not based upon the word of God, it is not of God. Are you getting this today? It doesn't matter what you do. If my preaching isn't based on the Word, it's not of God. If your teaching is not based upon the Word of God, it's not of God. If your singing is not based upon the Word of God, it's not of God. If your testimony is not based upon the Word of God, it's not of God. Plain, pure, and simple. If your marriage is not based upon the Word of God, it's not of God. So many out there today, homosexual marriages and all this garbage and all this filth and all this foolishness today. Friends, I'm going to tell you there's a lot of people who are going to be lost. Yes. But friends, we're all going to be tempted at some time. How do you think his little children are tempted? Sure. I'm just tempted to use a little kid. Yeah. Anybody? Yeah. Okay, I was. You know, lying was a capital offense in our house. You didn't lie. You got whacked if you got lying. That, that was, you don't lie. You did not do that. Okay? 
I remember one time, my brother and I, we were out not down the other one. He was out in a shed. We had a war shed out there. We had bug spray. We're just little guys. So I don't know, five, six, six, seven. And we're out there bug spray, just to spray that bug spray. Dad come in and she said, you boys spray. <laughs> Father drowned in a, you know, in a cloud of toxic blue. You know, bug spray. It wasn't us, you know. I know you're, you're tempted to lie. You're tempted to steal. Right. Even little kids. Yeah. You know that? Little, little rest. Say that. Even a child that's known by his noise was working pure and right. We're going back in the book of Proverbs. And when the kid's got a good heart up, it shows up in that kid's actions and things that he does. Whether his work is good or whether it's bad. But see, Jesus was led in the spirit and was driven, as one of the other gospel writers said, in the spirit to be tempted of the devil. Now, how many of when we're tempted that we're drawn away of our own lust and enticed? In James chapter 1, the word of God says, Let no man say when he is tempted, that he is tempted of God, for God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempted with he any man. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. When lust hath conceived, that bringeth forth sin, and sin when in his face bringeth forth death. Every man is tempted. If I didn't have any lust in me, I couldn't be tempted. That's right. So if I'm tempted, then I must have some lust down in me somewhere. Now you think just sexual lust. There's a lot of different kinds of lust. There's lust for money. There's lust for power. There's lust for sex. There's lust for lust for approval. Lust for for, uh, uh, for a lot of different things in our life. But if we didn't have lust, we couldn't be tempted. But we're tempted. When I'm tempted, it's not Cooper's fault. But right. if Cooper's tempted, it's not my fault. Well, okay, we'll say it's my fault. Okay. <laughs> now, if I'm preaching bad and Clifford's had enough, he may be tempted to walk me in the head, so maybe it is my fault. I don't know. But you see, the thing is, if we don't have, say, well, I'm just, I'm just perfect. I'm all saved and baptized and the Holy Ghost and ready to go to heaven. I could, give me, I've said this for, give me five minutes for you and I'll make you tell me that's not, one way or the other. <laughs> five minutes. Five minutes you'll be calling 911, either for me or for you. I'll say that. I've told people, I know if I ever backslide, the devil can really use me. You know that? Yes, sir. But see, the thing is, when we're tempted, we're going away of our own lusts. Yeah. And we're enticed. Amen. There's something in me that wants something that's out there that I'm not supposed to have. That's right. Say, so we're all past that now. You're 66. Oh, my goodness, I'll lose. <laughs> oh, boy. I'm trying to diet and lose weight and walk and exercise and trying to drop some weight and I have a vision of a chocolate pie in my mind. <laughs> that Sunday brought me a chocolate pie this last, last Sunday. If you have one, don't you for me, don't you dare leave it down to be working today. <laughs> but you see, we're tempted because there's something out there that we want. Yeah. When lust hath conceived, that bringeth forth sin. Isn't this interesting? That sin is a child of lust. And I've said before, and I believe I can prove it to you, that every sin that's committed is based upon lust. Amen. Yeah. Every sin that's committed is based upon lust yeah. somewhere. Of some kind, every sin. The Word of God says, Wherefore get unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these you may be partakers of the divine nature, have escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. So the corrupt, this whole world is corrupted by lust. Because somebody wanted what God said you can't have. That's right. You can have all these trees over here. You can have all this fruit over here. But this one tree is mine, God said, you can't have it. And somebody wanted what would belong to the Lord. That's right. Isn't that right? Amen. Somebody wanted what belonged to God. And it's very interesting when Jesus was tempted. That he was tempted in the wilderness. He was the last Adam. And the first Adam was tempted in the garden. The last Adam was tempted where there was nothing to eat. The first Adam was tempted where there was plenty to eat. Do you see how God's the deck was stacked against Jesus? Yeah. So, no, Tim, this is just a good Bible story. And it's, a little, it's got some. I, I'm going to tell you something. This whole temptation. When he was tempted to rocks and bread. When he was tempted to jump off the pinnacle of the temple. When he was tempted to worship. And he wasn't. Or he was tempted to worship the devil. I know everything hung and fell upon how Jesus handled that temptation. Or they said, everything, the entire, the entire plan of God, it, it, it hints upon what happened here in that wilderness experience out there. And I've seen that wilderness. I've been down through that Judean wilderness. There's nothing out there. Maybe some sagebrush or something like that. There's nothing out there but sand and dirt and rock. Right. You stand down there at Jericho, there's a big mountain. There. They call the mountain temptation. 
Maybe it was, maybe it was, but somewhere he was back. Somewhere in the morning, somewhere out there. With the wild beast, the word of God says 40 days in front. But everything depended upon how Jesus handled that temptation. Paul, the, 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 the plan of God, the types of Jesus is the Lamb of God, is the water of life, is the bread of life. All the things that Jesus was, it came down in this right here. It was how he handled these temptations right there. Amen. Pastor Dave, you like Isaiah. Isaiah the Messianic prophet. Of course, there was others that, that prophesied in the science too. But you see the thing with all those prophecies would either fail or succeed right here upon how Jesus handled this temptation. The salvation of every man, woman, and child that had ever lived was living or would ever live depended upon how Jesus handled those temptations right there. Do you understand that? I knew that, that the salvation of people could depend upon you how you and I handle our temptations. That's right. That's right. Oh, this is serious business now. Right. Yeah. I've left the little homilies and we've got down to preaching now. Amen. How you handle your temptations could determine whether somebody makes heaven or makes hell. Right. I think it was Max, what was his name, John? National memory service, correct? I've heard it with him. Another brother, I believe, was talking about the same event. They were ministers' conference, and the hotel was full of ministers. And John would minister to the to the owner of the hotel or the manager, whatever he was. He would tell him about Jesus through the week and talk to him and talk to him about the Lord. And he told him last night, the last one he came to, he says, I'll talk to you about what, what do you think about receiving Christ? He says, Let me show you something here. He says, I forget what it was something like 80% of the ministers, he said, as in his hotel was viewing pornography last night. And he says, if that's the best your Jesus can do, I don't think I need it. Are you getting this today? It's very serious. It's very, very serious. Whatever a friend sees me do, hears me say, sees where I go, his or her salvation could depend upon that. And Paul talked about those that said at meet in idols temple for lesser, weaker brothers see you. Their conscience is offended you one or weeks. But conscience of the weaker brother. Why well, shall be judged of another man? Because you're responsible for that man or that woman's soul. You're responsible for that man or that woman or your classmate or your friend. You're responsible for their soul. And so am I. I've had one or two people tell me, I've Jim, I watched your life and I went. I began to serve Christ because just watching him. I was, I was only when I was 18. 17 and 18, I got saved and I was serving Christ. The man was there that named me the Lord one time. He was watching me. Just to see how I was going to live. I'm, talking, I'm not talking about somebody who's read the Bible for it. I'm not talking about somebody who's ever preached a message. I'm talking about a young baby Christian. And he watched me and he watched me. And eventually he came to Christ. And his son came to Christ, and they were both preachers. Mm -hmm. What if I had done some of the things the rest of them were doing? That's right. What if I was playing the parlay cards? I didn't even heard of parlay cards until, they, until I got out there. I still don't know what they are, except you just bet on football or something. But that's all I can tell you. Never used one in my life. Sat in a reading. I sat there. Read my Bible and got calls from me going through his pornographic magazines. I'm not talking to somebody that's is a seasoned minister. I'm not a new Christian. Well, I just can't live for Christ just because you don't want to. Or you don't have the power to. But you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost is coming upon you. And we need to have more of the Holy Ghost. Sin conceived that brings forth sin. Sin is a child of lust. And when sin is finished, it brings forth death. I want you to hear this. Do not err, my beloved brother. This wasn't written. James would come up that the 12 tribes got to God. It wasn't written to sinners after the world. He said, my brother. Are you hearing this today? That's right. It was written in the church. Yes. To watch the temptations too. And then the good news, there's no temptation that's taking but it's just common to man. You'll never have a temptation that somebody else hasn't had. 
If you're undergoing, how many the word of God says, Blessed is a man that endureth temptation, for when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord of the promise to them that love him. You see, it's a matter of who you're going to love, yourself or Jesus. That's really what it boils down to. Whether you're going to love God or you're going to love yourself. That's what it boils down to. We can mix all kind of fancy metaphors and say, Man, that's all else. Who are you going to serve? Are you going to serve God? Are you going to serve yourself? Are you going to serve Christ? Are you going to serve the devil? First temptation, turn these rocks into bread. If you're the Son of God, he, how did he knew he was the Son of God? His Father had just spoken at the Jordan River, said, This is my beloved Son, and whom I'm well pleased. He knew who he was. He knew that Jesus was the Son of God, and Jesus knew who he was. If he didn't know before, he certainly knew again when the heavens, but God spoke from heaven and said, This is my beloved Son, and whom I'm well pleased. Hallelujah. Amen. Are you hearing this today, beloved friends? The Son of God. Because if you're the son of God, turn these rocks into bread. I know he could have done it. He could have, he could have picked up a rock and made a, made a loaf of bread out of it. You know, like those bread that you got over there, you had at that dinner that I remember. Was, this is service roll, lease rolls or something like that. Uh -huh. I know something like that. Well, I tell you what, you have one of those, you throw away a bigger bowl. You don't even want it anymore. You want the knee strokes. I mean, those rascals are good. But Jesus could have done that. He could have looked for himself. Achan did. Achan said, I want a Babylonian starving and some silver and gold more than I want, than I want anything else right now. The relationship with God. Yeah. Lot said, I'd rather have the plain of Sodom and all that goes with it than to stay up in the mountains of Lord Abraham and pray and seek God. That's not exactly word for word. That's close enough. The he says, I'd rather have uh, two, two, uh, uh, so a couple of changes of garment and two talents of silver rather than have the anointing of God upon my life. Right. Think about it. He could have been maybe the next prophet of God. Yeah, he said could have been. But yeah, he said thrown away for a bunch of junk. What are you throwing away your salvation and your witness and your testimony? You're always going away for a bunch of junk. That's right. Amen. Well, you know, she's worth it. He's worth it. He's worth giving up my virginity for. She's worth throwing away my testimony for. How stupid. Or flinch. You take the life and the breath out of it. It's just an old piece of, of rotting flesh lying there on the ground. I know that's not very pleasant. That's the facts of life. And that's what people trade their salvation for. Trade their, their witness and their testimony for. Well, we'll have a smaller crowd next week. Second temptation, well, we're seeing people do that same thing today. Ministers that trade their ministries for a woman or for a pile of money. We got one of them, one of the uh, networks, I'm not naming it. He's, he's the flagship carrier or whatever, the flagship, the flight carrier for this thousand dollar gift thing. You see them on there. These are old photos. These are old, old videos, by the way. I've, I've seen him lately. <laughs> he doesn't look anything like that. He doesn't look anything like a big, strong man, fried chicken eating man, and all the kind of stuff that he does. I mean, he, he's old, and he looks old. I guess I look older. He looks older than I do. He's probably older than I am anyway. But he looks it, and I'm still looking at you. <laughs> see what clean living will do for you? Not a single way that would only Cliff or Dressy down get on here. <laughs> Jump off the temple. Make sure you're somebody in this world. Make sure everybody's watching you. Don't know how beautiful and how wonderful you are. You're anointed. You're God's man of the hour. The Lord's lucky to have you. You know, if you're really used of God, there ought to be a humbling about that. Yes. Amen. There ought to be a humbling about that. Yes. That once you have spoken, once you've acted, go high. I need the glory of God. Amen. Are you hearing this today? Amen.
there's a there's a tendency among young spirit-filled Christians to we've got to prove who we are, we've got to prove who God is. I don't have to prove who God is, He's already done that. I don't have to prove who I am because I'm not worth knowing anyway outside of Christ. Amen. Are you hearing this today? So don't get hung up on yourself because you really ain't all that much anyway. Amen. And neither am I. Amen. The days you'll come in, don't have anybody in the casket. Door carries. Don't even look good. They got intended just right. He was a farm boy preacher. He looks like a farm boy preacher right here. So he over. And no one loved me. You seem like I have a little bit of white powder there. For Jennifer, you'll brush it away because it don't fit me. I know you will because you're my sister and I'm trying. So do that. She, she tells me if my nose is running on you, she does that for you. And like her child, she's got two of us. You know, her fruit is counting Jack, I suppose. And then they said, I don't know. It's after Jack. Oh, yeah. <laughs> they put on Jack. It's real good to see you kids this morning. But don't think you're all that. Yeah. Always exalt the Lord. Amen. And it'll be okay. That's right. And you know, it doesn't matter how, how much you're given. I'm saying of the Spirit. How much the Spirit's given for you? Because if you are in God's will for that moment and that hour, there's nobody more necessary or needed in the body of Christ That's right. than you are at that moment. I might be praying for somebody in the hospital to get saved or to be healed. And you might be giving them a loaf of bread or a bag of handguns. But that's the work of God. And that's what they need. And that's greatness because it's all with the love of God. If you're really the Son of God, if you fall down and worship me, Jesus, I'll give it all to you. Mm -hmm. haven't, haven't you heard that before? Yeah. It's all yours. Yeah. Now, you don't hear it just the devil just speaking to you one-on-one. -on -one, but that really, that's what you hear. Mm -hmm. If you'll just do what I want you to do, it'll be okay. It'll be great. Yeah. Go ahead and curse your parents and leave them behind. It'll be good. How many kids get out there today and they, they stumble and they bum over around the world and they have nothing and they're messed up for years because they wouldn't listen to dad and mom trying to tell them the truth. If you're just fall down and worship me, Jesus, I'll give you the kingdoms of the world. He showed, he showed Jesus the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. He showed him, I'm sure, the glory of Rome. A Parthia, probably of a, a, a whatever dynasty it was in, in China at that time, and down to the Indus Valley, and in Mesoamerica, and all the nations of the world, the glory of Japan, of Korea at that time. If you're just going down to worship me, Jesus, I'll give it all to you. And that's what he was coming for, but he was coming at, on his way, not the devil's way. And you can read in the book of Revelation, the kingdoms of this world have become the kingdoms of our God and of his Christ. I'm going to tell you something right now. We need to get America back to God before it's too late. We need to get America back to God before it's too late. Because we are now a godless, confused nation as far as having our own personal God goes. Amen. So all down worship. Can you imagine what he would have done? He would have had a shadow over his face. Christ would. Yes. And we were the devil's shadow. Mm -hmm. Stand between him and his heavenly father. That's right. It would have tore the Godhead up. Yes. Do you understand what we're saying? This was serious, serious yes. business. Mm -hmm. You know what? I'm glad he didn't heal to the devil. That's right. Isn't that wonderful? And you and I don't have to either. That's right. But God is faithful. There's no temptation that's taken you. Amen. But it's just common to man. But God is faithful, who with the temptation make a way to escape that you may be able, able to bear it. And there's always an exit sign out of temptation. That's what you need to look for is the exit sign. You don't look for the second helping table. You look for the exit for the buffet table. You look to get out of that. Just like Joseph, when he was tempted to follow for his wife, he took off. He left his coat behind. Somebody said he became a streaker for righteousness. I don't think so, but he got on there anyway. 
You see today, church, we don't have to heal and let the devil have his way. Because greater is he that's in us than he that's in the world. You know, today, church, it all comes back to this book. What Jesus defeated the devil with was the word of God. That's all that he had. That's right. He had the word of God. He had good, and you know he defeated him out of Deuteronomy chapter 6 and chapter 8. That's where he defeated him from. He knew the Bible. This Bible doesn't do you any good laying on your coffee table. Laying on the back window of your car. And when I stand in bed, it's when you get God's word down in your heart. That's what makes the difference. That's become the sword of the spirit within your life. When it becomes the shield of faith, it puts all the fiery darts of the enemy. Say all. all. Every last one of them is not the word of God. Because you've kept the word of my patience, I will keep you from the hour of temptation that comes upon the earth, Jesus told the church of Philadelphia. Yes. I haven't come here to beat people, but I've come to pay the truth. Amen. This is where I feel we're going to have us go, so that's where we went, and this is where we are. Amen. But it's all by the word of Almighty God. Amen. You know, there's a lot of stuff in this Bible I can't prove. I can't prove. But that's right, because God has given us something that will help us get there. I know what that is. It's called faith. That's right. Through faith, we understand that the world's refrained by the Word of God. So the things are made, not, we're not made of things which do appear. I can't, I've got, you know, I've got to believe somebody. I can believe the big bangers. Yeah. I can believe the great I am. Amen. I choose the great I am because the big bangers weren't back there, but the great I am was when everything was made. I had, the, I had the devil come to me about, I'm not going to give it to you because I don't want to mess your head up either. But about two or three years ago with a, some scripture that, that I couldn't prove. And there's some things you just have to take by faith. Right. Billy Graham has said the same thing. He says, so long this book I can't prove, but I, I believe it. I believe it by faith. Amen. And, and somebody said, you just got to take a step when it looks like there's nothing to step on and just believe God and walk on out there. Right. And that's what you got to do. It's just simply walk by faith. The just shall live by faith. The just shall live only by faith, but the just shall live by his faith. I can't live by Brother Roy's faith. I've got to live by my faith. I can't live by Butch's faith. I've got to live by my faith. You've got to have a faith that God has imparted to you. And God has dealt to every man to measure faith. And we're going to overcome with the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. And we're not going to love our life. And we're getting there now. The only thing we overcame with the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony, the third thing is we love not our lives or the death. We may be entering the third place very soon. That's right. So you're going to have to decide that you're going to stand, you're going to fall, and pray for grace in Jesus' name. Father, I pray today for everyone that is struggling with temptation. And God, I may not be struggling with it today. Or maybe just a little, one of them, round or two up runs every now and then through my mind. Or, Whatever God, I throw the thing out of there. But God, it's not a new temptation, but there may be for someone today. And we're not here to condemn anybody, but to help everybody. Lord, you didn't have to turn bread, rocks into bread. You didn't, you didn't have to, to listen to the law about the, or even the distorted truth about angels that keep you in the, and you could have just jumped off the temple and been all right. When it was all done, the angels came to you. And angels ministered to you. And angels helped you, Jesus. Now, Lord, I'm asking you by the Holy Spirit to help my brothers and my sisters and myself. And this hour, God, to stand. And to stand godly, righteously, and true. Uncompromisingly, with the faith that the world sees and recognizes there's something different about us. Whether they love us or whether they hate us, we've done all you would have us to do. And God, lift those up today that are going through it, God. There's some that have been going through it for years. There are some that may go through temptation so long as it's been established as a habit within their life. Established habits, established bondages that need to be broken, Lord. And I pray that it would stop and that the bondages would be broken. You broke my bondages and I break the bondages of my friends and your friends, I pray. For we ask it in the name that's above every name. And for those that, that don't even know the Savior I'm talking about, they'll just say, Your Lord Jesus, come in my heart, I believe that you died for me, and I believe you rose again from the dead. You give me eternal life, and I receive you in my heart now. 
as my Savior and Lord. And I repent of all my sins. Save me, Lord Jesus, and we're saved. You have our brothers and sisters here in the sanctuary, those in the cars, those that listen in their homes the radio or in the car the radio or listen on disc or how they get this, God. Just, just let this word lift them up. We pray in the ways of the Lord. We ask it in Jesus' name. In agreement we say, amen, and so be it. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. I was talking to a man last night. I can't remember his name. First name I remember, but I don't remember his last name. But they built this, they built this pavilion up there. And the water came and got past the pavilion. He thought it was all going with Bill on the good foundation. Friends, if you're going to stand when the storms come, you're going to have to build on the word of God. And that's all there is to it. You build everything by God's word. Amen? Yes. I'm not going to have a fight with my wife and come in here and preach to you people and I'll make it right. I'm not going to have a temptation running through my mind that I don't get rid of before I get up here. Right. You hear what I'm telling you? I'm not going to be mad at you. Are you mad at somebody else and get up here and try to preach the word of God? I just won't do it. I won't take communion if I don't feel worthy. And there's been times I've turned the service over, many different times, just to share with brothers and sisters. There are times because I haven't felt worthy. And that's really between me and God. That's right. And I'll take communion for several months, and I think you need to be concerned. That we each stand, as mom said, every time stands on some bottle. Right. Stand for Jesus. Can you say amen? I wish we could shake hands with one another. I wish I could hug you. Mess your hair up some of you guys. No, I'm not going to ask Cliff's up. you got to have a sprig or two there somewhere. I'll tell you what I'm thinking later, okay? <laughs> Every heart turned for you this morning. Brother Mortar, got anything you want to say? Stop talking. Okay. Don't come up close in the first day, please, would you?